Welcome to the Autumn Acorn. This is Judy and I am Judy and this is my podcast about all of the things that I've been working on in the month of March. I hope you have something warm or cold to drink and that you have a project you're working on. I am going to show you four finished objects today. Two works in progress some acquisitions. I'm going to talk about two patterns that I'll be releasing this month um, and some podcasts that I'm enjoying and then just a little chatter at the end if you decide to stick around. Welcome to episode 65. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you, um, I have them peeking out of this little tote bag that I showed you last episode that I sewed. Um, that was a really fun project. If you um, are interested in sewing one of these for yourself, I left the link in my last podcast episode, 64. It's a free uh, YouTube video for a very easy tutorial. So anyway, the first project is is a pair of socks and the story behind these socks or I should say this yarn is that uh, my friend Marie came to visit a couple of weeks ago and along with her she brought this beautiful uh, magpie fibers yarn it is their swanky DK base which is very luxurious uh, it has 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And it uh, is a beautiful speckled purpley pink color. I'd say it's more on the purpley side. I don't know. It, it really leans both ways. But it is such a pretty color. I had so much fun working with this yarn because I love the speckles. Um, I used Knitter's Pride Zing in a US-3. I'm missing one. I lost it uh, in the floorboards. <laughs> I'm going to need to find it when I lose one of these because I don't know about you, but I'm always losing at least one of my DPNs. So. Anyway, US-3, 3.25 millimeter. And these are my newest Magic Heel socks. And here they are. They're a little fuzzy because of, uh, I think it's because of the cashmere. They're a little fuzzy and luxurious, like I said. But I just thought that was so kind of Marie. And the reason she brought them is she had two skeins. She's, she was test knitting, um, she was test knitting this pattern for me. She was one of the testers. And she thought it would just be fun if when she came over, she brought yarn so that we had matching yarn, matching socks, and we had a little cast on party and uh, quite a few giggles. It was actually quite funny. So yeah, these are the Magic Heel Socks Ribbed DK. So they are a fully ribbed sock and it's a very pretty rib, I think. Uh, with that famous magic heel and the ribbing goes all the way through the sock. Um, let's see, these fit better than any magic heel sock I've ever designed or knit. They fit really, really well. Um, what can I say? It was a beautiful yarn to work with. The pattern was intuitive. I just it was a great experience and I had extra yarn so not only did I have the yarn that you just saw that little nugget but I also pulled out uh, a bunch more so that I could put it in my marled garter stitch blanket that I'll show you in a little while but yeah so this pattern will be released um, this Saturday is that April 8th I believe that is I believe that's April 8th, but I'm going to talk about that later. But anyway, I'm happy to have these finished, and now I can wear them. But if you have never knit uh, socks, and you're a little bit nervous about turning a heel, knitting a gusset, 
or any of that stuff that can go along with <clears throat> a traditional heel, I highly <laughs> recommend the Magic Heel because it has helped literally thousands and thousands of knitters get over their fear of knitting socks. Also great for uh, gift knits, um, children, because they can, because of the way the heel is, is um, knit, they <clears throat> can fit multiple sizes. So really good for that as well. So yeah, I will talk more about the release in a little while. Now, I, um, these are the Magic Heels socks, the same exact pattern that I made last month. So I've already shown you those. Those were the original sample. And these are the Magic Heel Slipper Socks. Um, this is also another pattern that will be coming out soon. This one will be coming out in mid-April. And this was knit with two strands of Lopi yarn. So very bulky, very cozy, comfy, warm, and meant to be worn as house or bed slippers. I forgot to mention what I'm wearing, probably because it's just a self-drafted pattern that uh, I don't have any plans on releasing and it doesn't have a name. It's just a 100% uh, linen t-shirt that I just threw. I, I needed to use up the yarn because I'd had this linen yarn in my stash for a while. And I just felt like it was time to use it. I'm trying really hard to get through my stash this year. And um, so I just made it. It took me like a few days. It was, it was a very quick, very quick project. Very basic raglan style. <clears throat> and I love it. So it's been, it has been very handy to wear. And today the weather is just warm enough that I can and you know be comfortable in it so it's really nice I love this I love this so much so this is uh, the tulip uh, the tulip what do you call these things I always struggle with this word not a handkerchief headscarf would be one word what am I calling this I don't know I don't know what this is but it's adorable right do you like it crocheted and stay tuned for the pattern it's just a really really f quick easy I'm gonna make it in three different sizes by the time I'm done it should be in uh, written in three different sizes and my daughter Sarah is going to uh, model this one and do the photographs so I really appreciate that Sarah thank you so yeah there it is it's a headscarf. It's a bandana. That's it. <laughs> I think it's a head bandana, right? Is it? it doesn't matter. It's adorable. It fits well. Um, obviously, I'm not, this will not look good on me, so I'm not really going to wear it for reals, but you would tie it underneath. And very cute for the younger generation. So yeah, that was so quick and fun. I just threw this together not, not too long ago. Let me tell you about the yarns. So the three yarns that I used were all from my natural dye um, experiment last summer when I was doing solar dyeing in the jars. And this is a single ply thick and thin merino. Um, fingering weight fingering weight to heavy fingering I'd say and let's see if I have the dye stuff that I used I do so we have uh, Gerbera Daisy this was orange daylilies and Brazil wood and I just thought they looked really pretty together you know, the yellow and the pink and the green of the little flowers. So yeah, that's that is that. And again, this is in one of my little little um bags that I 
I sewed up with that pattern that I was just talking about. Okay. Now the next finished object is still very wet. So I finished it up a couple days ago and then blocked it today. This is um, an inspiration by my youngest daughter again, Sarah, and she's going to be modeling this tank top because Lord knows I'm not. <laughs> but she helped me with the design and I think it came out really cute. So I'm going to try to show you again. It is so damp. So here's the front. That's a little better, a little easier to show you like that, I guess. And then let me try to show you the back. There. Oh. It just wants to fold it on itself. Here. Kind of like that. And there is the back. And it has... Um, this the straps are adjustable that's why they have the button I'm sending her with another set of buttons just in case this is too long like the straps are too long she can just put a button here and then move it down or if the straps are too short she can wear <clears throat> she can wear it without them crossed in the back she can just wear it regular style. So I hope it fits her. This is definitely the first sample. I I don't know. I have never designed anything like this. So I took her measurements and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to send it off to Hawaii and then she can um she can get some pictures, but she is she's tiny. Like she is not a a big human. So I'm hoping it'll fit her. And of course, I will also make it in other sizes. I actually want to add uh, some um, bust increases in the center here for the, you know, if you're in a, a larger size body and you want to wear, um, you want this to cover all of you. <laughs> if you want to be fully covered, I wanted to make, um, make it for bigger sizes. Bigger, I'm trying to say bigger bra sizes or bigger chest sizes. So yep, no name yet, um, but stay tuned for this fun little top. All right, I have one more finished object. This is crazy, but I just finished this today. It's not blocked. I literally <laughs> just cast off or bound off or whatever you want to call it. And it is my countdown to Camp Cardi. I am so happy that this is finally finished. Oof. I started this quite some time ago. It may have been two years ago, and I kept putting it aside. I had one sleeve done for a long time, and I believe the last time I showed you, or maybe the time before that, the podcast episode before the last one, um... I told you I, I was I was working on it again. I had finished another sleeve and I'd already started on the body. <sighs> and now it's finished. I did get preoccupied with some other projects in between, but here she is. Here she is in all her glory. The sleeves with the mohair and all of the mini skeins. The main body is the top is done without mohair, and then you can see where I joined on to uh, add the mohair for the bottom of that body. It has a built-in I-cord uh, band. There are no buttons. This was meant to be worn open in the front. I'll, I'll try it on for you in a moment. Um, what else can I say? Top down. I used a fingering weight yarn. Uh, I have mohair in my mouth. I used a size US 2 for the cuffs, US 3 for everything else. Um, and I did a Jenny Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off for the bottom. It is a twisted rib cuff uh, collar. It's a very tiny collar and um, the 
but the bottom ribbing. It fits me really well. I love when you finish a project and you put it on and it feels like it was meant for you. And that's what this one feels like for me. I absolutely love it. Um, I have a hard time sometimes with sleeves being too short or too long. And oh my gosh, these are the perfect, <laughs> the perfect sleeve. They feel, I can't tell you how good they feel. I absolutely love the textures. Now I know I have a, you know, kind of a bulkier top under, but you get the idea, right? So, yeah, it's not meant to close all the way. It's meant to sit open like that. And I did short rows on the back, the bottom back. I'm going to try to stand up. I know this is hard. I may just put in a video of me modeling this, but if you can tell, I hope that that back, is sitting nice and low, but then the front comes up a, a little bit more. And I really, really love the way that adding the mohair to the bottom section gave it some waist shaping. So it's it just like perfectly fits around around the hips. So yeah, I'm really happy with this sweater. You should see the notes. Oh my goodness. This will give you an idea of the way that I <laughs> write my notes for batters. Oh my gosh, this is crazy, right? Yeah, it, believe it or not, this makes sense to me. All of my stickies are numbered. So if I lose one, one falls off. They're all stapled on them to this paper. I know, it's what works for me. And then I will get this typed up. <laughs> and actually, it'll make more sense to me once I see that all. Um, this is all I have left of this last skein. I think it took me... Two, 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 two skeins? Two full skeins of this beautiful... This is a, um alpaca merino blend gorgeous sock yarn. It's the softest, softest, naturally dyed black walnut. And all of the mini skeins I used were naturally dyed by myself. All This whole sweater was naturally dyed by myself. Um, and yeah, it was great fun, great fun. Just, I'm really happy it's done though. It's one of those projects that I don't know why. I, I mean, I suppose it's because it's fingering weight, but I that doesn't usually stop me. But I just don't know why I ended up stopping after one sleeve and feeling really stuck. But when I do the, when I write the pattern, it's all going to be written top down, even though I m may have knit the sleeve separately. Um, yeah, they won't be like, it won't be written like that in the pattern, so... So this is the countdown to Camp Cardi because I'm going to be camping a lot this summer and I thought and this spring and summer. So I thought it was an appropriate name. But I have to take it off now because it is warm out today. Not not warm like 70s or anything, but it's like 50 and so it feels really warm compared to what it's been. So I think we'll move on to um, my blanket. It is in my Max Carpet Bag Works carpet bag. Um, it's the perfect bag to keep blanket projects in or any like large projects. And that's what I do. So I showed you this the last time I podcasted and I had already ripped it out because I had already started and gotten about this much done or so and thought it was too tight, too rigid. And so I uh, ripped it out and started over again. And now I am much happier with the, um, the way the fabric feels. And I've made some really good progress, I think. 
So I'll try to show you. It's, it's, it's a little hard because it's such a beast. But I'll do it. The way I did it last time seemed to work where I just kind of go up. Uh, well, maybe not as well. <laughs> ah, how's that? That's better, I think. And then, yeah, like that. Um, I'm noticing a mistake right in the middle here. You know, there are a few mistakes in this. And they're really obvious, I find, with garter stitch. But you know what? This is a scrappy blanket. I don't care. I don't care. I love this blanket. I love the marled effect. Am I showing you the right side or the wrong side? Let's look. I am showing you the right side. So each time I start a new section or a new day, um, I move my progress keeper up and uh, that makes me feel like I've made progress. So obviously the last time I worked on it, I only did um, a few rows, but it's, it's a lot when you knit a row, it's heavy. It's getting to that point where it's just not, it's not as fun uh, as it was when I first started it, but I want to get it done. I really, really love the way it feels and it's using up a good amount of yarn. Now to you, the yarn that I'm using is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool, which I've already gone through two of the large eight ounce, I think they are, 250 gram skeins. I've already gone through two of those and I ended up ordering some more. This time though I ended up getting these smaller skeins. So yeah these are not nearly as big as the others. These are only three ounce skeins but all together I ended up getting about 500 grams of this. And it was a good price on eBay. Someone was de-stashing. I don't even know if they still make these labels anymore. They don't look they don't look like the other labels at all. Um here's the other the other label for the big skeins. Unless they just this is the, the small skein label. I'm not sure. They just look so different to me that I'm wondering if this is an older label, an older um yarn that she had, you know, the seller had lying around or something, but it really was useful. So now I am going to put all of the rest of it into this blanket with, I have a lot of minis, but here are just a selection of some of them. And um, it's really fun. I, I, I highly recommend if you need a mindless project, start mixing and combining different weights of yarn. It looks cool. I put a reel up um, on Instagram and a lot of people were really interested in the fabric that it was getting from the uh, one strand of worsted weight and one strand of fingering weight. Oh, and I am using some pretty good sized needles. These are US 13. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in metric or millimeters but um 13 I tried starting out with a 10 and a half 10 or 10 and a half and they that's when the fabric was just too dense so I would say 13 15s just start to get a little too big little they start to hurt a little bit on my hands but yep so I don't know I'm thinking probably by my May podcast. I should have this blanket finished. I hope. Fingers crossed. This project is being housed in this bag that I sewed a couple years ago. I used some linen fabric on the outside and then embroidered flowers and then some gray felt fabric on the inside. And uh, this has been a really handy little pouch. So in this <clears throat> I have a project which I saw on a podcast, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, but the hostess of that podcast had one of these. Whoops, there goes the DPN. What did I tell you? <laughs> uh, 
always losing them. But the hostess of that podcast um, had this really cool knotted pillow, and I think hers was crochet, on her bed. And it just got me thinking that I could make the same one only knit. So all it is essentially, and hers I think was tied like a Celtic knot. But you can tie them in any knot, any kind of um, sailor's knot or anything really. They That's something I'll come to. That's a bridge I'll cross. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Um, but anyway, all it is essentially is a tube. Now, my goal is to make this tube about 100 inches long. So far it's, I don't even know, maybe 24? I think it's 24. Two rulers, eight more rulers to go. That's how I'm looking at it. And it's just a tube. And then I, when I'm finished, I will stuff it and then tie it up into this really cool knot pillow. So I just figured, like, how hard can it be, right? I don't know. I just figured this was about the right diameter. This is just like knitting a never-ending sleeve. So if you hate sleeves, I don't think you'll enjoy this project. I don't mind it at all. I really like... Um, just the mindless stockinette that this this project is providing me um, watching TV or just I don't know it's just a really good like talking driving in the car as the passenger talking to Joe but knitting away some patterns I just can't do that with or I'm always like hold on a minute I have to count this one's perfect and <clears throat> you could see it's a nice natural color this is um, my leftover yarn from a design that I'm calling the Larkspur Lace Pullover. Which, um, I knit a sweater out of this, and it is Harrisville Designs Daylights in the color Over Easy. So it actually has a tinge of yellow going throughout it. Anyway, I'm using my DPNs and um, US fours. It's just it's really it's really fun. I'm enjoying it. I have a long way to go. <laughs> oh, and I'm using this beautiful stitch marker. I don't even remember where I got this. I had bought it at some point, but I just thought it looked really pretty with this project. Well, I did a little sweater surgery on my um, Story of Tree Swancho, which is a design that I released a year or two ago. Um, the sweater never fit me the way I wanted it to fit me. And I wanted to turn it into something that I would enjoy because I love this yarn. This yarn. This is by The Yarn in Us, and I do not believe that they are uh, dying anymore, unfortunately. But oh, what beautiful, beautiful wool. Um, this is a DK weight superwash merino, and I cannot remember all the colors, but it, um, I'll show you how it looks now. Now I just, I cut off the bottom of the sweater, and I cut off the sleeves, and now I have a cute little, I don't know what you call it, a little shrug, a little poncho. Here's the arms, the sleeves. But it's sad, but now at least this will keep me warm. Before it was just sitting there and I didn't know what to do with it. So I still have to block the bottom. So here, it's easier to tell you when I show you. But I, uh, even though I was really brave when I, when I cut this and I'll put in a little clip for you.
because there's color work and this is super wash merino like this is not sticky wool at all it's not rustic wool but it worked it worked well so I went all the way up this used to have like a long uh, I don't know like a longer spot here right so I just went straight up to the top right to the white and I cut across and then I picked up all those stitches and then I just knit down as far as I wanted it to roll because I knew I wanted it to be like a rolled hem and then I bound off with um, a stretchy bind off um, yeah and I cut the arms off I had just haven't unraveled those yet so that was fun and I feel like now I will get use out of this which is the goal with all of my knits So I won a giveaway on Instagram. That was so exciting. Holland Hoof Farm was giving away their handmade wooden buttons. They're so pretty, so I knew I had to try for that one. And I was so excited when I won and Valerie reached out to me and said, you know, you're the winner. I was just so excited. I can still... Mm, I can still smell the wood. So look at these. They're so cute. And they're beautiful. I love how they are all different uh, woods like that. You know, some of them are, I think it was walnut. I don't know. She has all the, I think mahogany is even one of these. But, and then... This one as well. So nice. So beautiful. Go check out their shop if you are in the market for some unique, beautiful, handcrafted buttons. I mean, come on. So good. So good. I love, I love them. Just a little card. Hall and Hoof. They have a lot of things too. They offer a lot of things in their, in their store. So thank you so much, Valerie. I really appreciate the gift a lot. I also picked up some silicone fingertips because um, my pointer finger has a hole in it and a callus and then it gets, uh, you know, another hole and then sometimes like I poke the hole with my needle and it just sends me through the roof. So Joe had this idea of using these silicone fingertips and so, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing now. I just put on the fingertip like that. And I continue knitting and it helps prevent that one area in the center of my finger from getting poked every time. They come in different sizes, um, meant for different fingers basically, different finger sizes. But um, I like to wear the, the smaller ones the best so far. So far they're, they're good. They do not interfere with knitting. And... They're inexpensive because I already know I'm going to be losing them, you know, a lot of them. They come in a bag full, so you have like eight in a pack. Or even, I think maybe it's 16. I think it's eight pink and eight of the, uh, the clear. So, yeah, I just started using these a couple of days ago. And I haven't had any injuries since. So, I'm going to say this is a win. And I recommend the silicone fingertips. Oh, some podcasts that I've been enjoying lately. Um, this first one is, I, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Woolberry Fiber Co. and um, Bethany, and she lives in Colorado. I always like to mention where people are from because that interests me. But Bethany has uh, started back up her podcast called the Woolberry Podcast. And I've been really enjoying it. I, you know, backed up and caught up on her episodes. And I just really like her laid back, kind of cool, calm style. And I just love to see the yarns they're dyeing and the things she's knitting. And I just like to hear about her life out there. It just sounds really fun. 
So I highly recommend Woolberry Podcast. And the other one is called Ginger Hook. And Laura from Germany is the hostess. And Laura is awesome. She's the one I got the knot pillow idea from. Um, Laura's a little more um, high energy, but oh, the projects she knits are just beautiful. And I really enjoy her aesthetic too. So I highly recommend Ginger Hook. So yep, um, I have the two Magic Heel socks being released. So one of them is being released. Hopefully, if this podcast goes out as planned, the sock pattern is being released today, today, today. So if you are watching this episode, run over and grab the Magic Heel Sock DK ribbed. And I'm going to give you a 50% off coupon code. So just type in April Socks and you will get 50% off that pattern on Ravelry and my website. I can't do it for Etsy though. So lastly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, I don't know, some personal stuff. I took a trip to Connecticut. It was my granddaughter Blake's third birthday already. Where does the time go? Oh, she's just, she's something else, that kid. She is delightful in every way. And we just had a really fun time celebrating her. And then something that my daughter and I haven't done since she had the girls was just go somewhere and do something just for us. So she signed us up for a watercolor painting class that was at their local library in Newtown, Connecticut. And... First we went out to um, to have some dinner and we had, you know, a glass of wine. So we were a little silly and then we got to the class and we were a little bit late so it felt like, you know, high school again and we had to sit in the corner. But <laughs> we had the best time painting. We were doing a winter scene. I'm not even going to show you mine because it's awful. It's a long story but basically... Because we were late and we were last, I ended up with a paintbrush that was just way too big. You couldn't use it for any detail. And yet I was expected to make all these trees in detail. It was funny. It was funny. But we had the best time. So I'll put a picture here. Um, just don't, yeah. D don't, don't judge, please. But yeah, and then my son, my, I, I just had my birthday on uh, Monday, just had my birthday on Monday, and uh, my son came up to visit beforehand, and he stayed for a couple of days, and he brought me some gifts, and oh, it was so fun. We went out to eat for dinner, and had some, some um, chocolate peanut butter, chocolate peanut butter pie. <laughs> so good. And it was just a really nice time. So, yeah. That is about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you are creating beautiful things yourself. And please do subscribe if you haven't already. I really am trying to grow the channel. If you don't mind liking the video, that helps an awful lot. And perhaps you could leave a comment and we could chat a little bit. It's been wonderful sitting here with you today, and I'll see you soon. Bye now. Take care.